Hey everyone, I just got Mon Mothma and Luthen Rail in from Ami Ami, which is a Japanese website. They took about 9 days to get here, and I ordered two of each, and so with shipping it came out to about $30 per figure, so yes, you could pre-order these from somewhere in the US, but wouldn't you rather give it all for something real? And they also have a ton of the Endor exclusives in stock as well, so if you're thinking about getting just these two figures, which are the only two from the new wave that they have in stock, some of those other exclusives will help balance out the shipping cost. Typical plastic-free packaging here, we do see that these are number 6 and 7 in the Andor series. I don't have the Bix Kayleen figure in yet, but once I get her, I will do kind of like an overall of the Andor figures, you know, a mini shelf series, even though we are waiting on the Velsartha figure and whatever else happens to get revealed in the meantime. I'm gonna unbox this guy with a quick magic trick because I did already open this earlier this week, but I've been quite sick and I just did not have it in me to film a review earlier this week, but I also couldn't wait to open these. He has his little wand accessory that in the show expands into kind of like a walking stick, but here we see that it actually has like a blade inside. He's posed with this on the box. We never saw him actually open that in the show and there was a lot of uh, you know discussion of whether or not it was a lightsaber or something like that and then we also have his pistol here i think this is a brand new sculpt i don't think we've seen this weapon before in the black series correct me if i am wrong in the comments really beautiful sculpt all around the figure here i don't have any notes on the sculpt here I thought that this little like expanded sleeve on his arm here was going to be a separate piece and that if you were to bend his arms that it they would kind of bend through that but it is all just part of the same piece and then there's very limited articulation on the hands here because of the sculpt so they can swivel but they can't really do anything else pretty decent articulation at the elbow and then the legs here have that really clever sculpt like the Boba Fett and the Ahsoka figures did with the puffy pants where it hides the seam with the fabric that kind of goes straight up and over the thigh there, and then the same kind of giant uh, knee joint here with pretty decent articulation at the knee. And so I'm really happy with the way that that was sculpted. I think that is the best uh, way to do that. And then we don't have any ankle swivel, but we do have the foot swivel. And then pretty decent articulation at the neck here. He can look down pretty far. And that brings us into the amazing head sculpt here. They absolutely nailed this one. The photo reel looks great. They even sculpted some wrinkles onto his neck to show his age here. I don't think we've seen that before in the figures of older characters. I might be wrong there. And then I like the way that they have the neck swivel under the collar as opposed to the neck being a separate piece that's kind of trapped inside that high collar. So that allows for some extra articulation there. He does have some pretty intense butterfly joints at the shoulders that are hidden by the trench coat here, but the trench coat then does limit some of the movement, even though it does have a really nice flexible quality to it. And it's cut at the hips there, so that way you can get him into the splits, you know how he does in the show. I do have some issue with the sculpt on the sleeves that uh, Mon Mothma also has the same issue, which we'll get to in a second. It's really tough with, you know, characters that have baggy clothes like this to turn them into plastic, but we'll cover that in a bit. So here's Mon Mothma's box. I did already unbox her and she just comes you know wrapped in tissue paper like the other plastic free figures there she is really beautiful face sculpt here i think they totally nailed the likeness of the actress it i'm a little worried about the face printing on some of these i got lucky with mine i you know not being able to see the faces in the package is really a bummer because this is just one of those head sculpts where the face printing needs to be spot on for it to work Let's talk about some of the articulation a little bit on the wrist here, and then some pretty decent articulation at the neck. But, you know, this is the traffic cone of all traffic cone figures. The dress is so tight, you really cannot get any movement here. This is me peeling up pretty forcefully, and that's as far as it goes. Pretty nice sculpt on the legs. If you're a customizer, you might be able to get some good use out of these legs and those high heels. But of course, she's really just designed to sort of stand like this on the shelf. Her left hand is just, you know, a chill open hand. She does have a trigger finger on the right hand. Uh, maybe that's a spoiler, but um, I did order some 1 12th scale champagne glasses on Etsy for like four bucks. Uh, I'll have those linked below. So I might have her holding one of those on the shelf or I might have to 3D print like a Coruscant data pad or something like that. I would love to be able to pose her with her hands together like she is on the box, but it doesn't, it was a little bit tricky. And then of course the angle of the sleeves just looks a little bit silly. 
They're kind of designed just for her hands to be at her sides, but I think it should have been sculpted so that when her hands are up like this that the sleeves hang straight down because even when you put her arms down they would slope back a little bit but I think it would still be believable rather than having them slope forward like that. Because when her arms are at her sides I think it would have totally looked fine if the sleeves were just kind of flying backwards a little bit. So these do have a little bit of shine to them. You know we see this a lot with newer black series for whatever reason. Luthen's chest especially looks kind of like the Andor figure from the the B2 Emo 2 pack, which if you watched my video about that was extremely shiny and took me like nine coats of this Mr. Super Clear. By the way, if you're going to use this stuff, please wear a mask and do it outside. But just a little bit of the clear coat actually made a big difference, and I think these look great. Luthen still has that really shiny chest. I had to use a Krylon spray on Cassian to, on just his clothing, but it tends to not age as well as the Mr. Super Clear. I've used the Krylon for a while, and after about a year, it starts kind of caking up a little bit and looking a bit gummy on the fabric. Well, the sculpted fabric, of course. But let's see how these look with some of the other Andor figures. I'm not going to do the full, you know, Andor shelf series here, but here's the Cassian figure with lots of layers of the matte spray on there. And it'd be too emo that I did some dark wash and dry brushing on. I think Cassian and Luthen look really awesome together. Mon Mothma definitely stands out. I mean, in the show, there's a very stark visual contrast between her scenes and the gritty Ferex scenes and everything else that, you know, Andor deals with, so she'll feel a little bit out of place on the shelf, at least with the Andor figures that we've seen announced so far. I'm still really glad that we got her. She was definitely high on my list of figures that I wanted from this show. And, you know, for what it is, I think she looks great. I have the rest of this wave coming in from a friend in Hong Kong, so I'll be doing reviews of, you know, the Jedi Luke, the HK droid, all those exciting ones coming out soon. Please subscribe if you want to see those. Leave a like, and I'll see you all next time.